En los primeros años que yo empecé a trabajar allá, la cosecha ha sido buenísima. Pero después se viene una sequedad que no se cosechó maíz. Los inviernos han sido escasos. Uno gasta y no se produce. Entonces uno eh, le dan deseo hasta de agarrar a otro lado a trabajar. La gente han emigrado para otro país por falta de recursos, por falta de economía, por falta de alimentación. No hay trabajo para que esta gente se quede trabajando en el, su misma comunidad o en el mismo pueblo. El PMA nos está apoyando con la dieta alimentaria. Por ejemplo, cosechar nosotros los productos que los vamos a consumir. Que he aprendido cómo sembrar las semillas que nos dan, cómo emprender un negocio. Trabajar con aboneras, barreras vivas, barreras muertas. Así hemos ido forestando, se puede decir. Entonces nuestras tierras ya van prosperando. Han habido proyectos de de enseñanza. Esto ha sido muy beneficioso para nosotros porque generamos ingresos. Así unidos podemos hacer muchas cosas. Ya hay como una facilidad de trabajar más en el campo. Yo cultivo la tierra y tengo mis siembros y soy feliz con mis hijos acá. Como le digo, eso me motivó a quedarme más acá. You don't need an invitation. And I think that's the beauty of the Food Systems Summit. To me, the UN Food Systems Summit is the opportunity to help us achieve the SDGs. Connecting, catalyzing, sharing, discovering. It's a people summit and it's a solution summit. This summit seeks to have inclusion of the youth, marginalized people, communities that are not regularly engaged in these types of summit. The summit is really a timely opportunity for us all to refocus to ensure no one is left behind. By putting the dignity of those who produce and distribute our food first, we can change the whole system going forward. Young people are amongst the hardest working in many parts of the world. The youth have led from the front and are the leaders of today. Young people are leveraging technology, passion and their commitment to a safer future to change the course in global and local food systems. When we empower women, those women turn around and invest in their families and their communities. Women are very important in increasing food security. Put resources, money in the hands of the women, that's how we change the world. There is no transformation of food systems without producers. It's the next generation of our farmers who are being called into action. It is critical that our farmers and ranchers are seen at the table as leaders in their own right. 70% of African adults work in agriculture and agribusiness. If they aren't doing well, then Africa isn't doing well. It's very critical to see how as indigenous peoples we can change the narrative. We gathered now to recognize that indigenous population have something to teach us. Let's listen to the indigenous people. Let's help them help us preserve our earth. There is hope. Since my initial call for this summit, you have responded with energy, ideas, and the willingness to forge new partnerships. Voices of the indigenous people, of civil society, of business, of our member states here in Rome, in New York, and more especially in our countries. Each and every one of them has underscored the importance of action. Nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. The next nine years is about really coming through. So people, let's go. We all know that this future is in our hands. Let's go get it. Listen to your vegetables and help the plant. You get it, Mooch. You and Summit, dead. Food is more than just what we eat. The ways in which we produce, process, and consume food touches every aspect of life on this planet. It is the foundation of our cultures, our economies, and our relationship with the natural world, and has the power to bring us together as families, communities, and nations. Families and children are on the brink of famine. But today's food systems are fragile and unequal. When they fail, there are ripple effects around the world. And the pandemic has impacted the most vulnerable among us. 
But we know what we need to do to get back on track. We have an opportunity to build back stronger than ever. Transforming our food systems is possible and necessary. And we can set a course to make real change for the benefit of all people by bringing together key players from around the world and giving voice to citizens in every country. Because a strong food system means no matter your race, no matter your class, no matter where you live, women and men have equal opportunities to produce and access nutritious food. Which promotes human health at every step without degrading land and water resources. Significa una agricultura familiar. Provide us, the community, with stability. All year round, every month, every day of the week. Even during a pandemic. We are all connected and we all have a responsibility to act. We must be bold. We must think and act differently. Transforming our food systems is the most powerful action we can take to solve our biggest problems. Because together, we can build a just a resilient world. A just and resilient world. Where no one is left behind. 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 No is left behind. Join us today. Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, you're all welcome to this high level working group a year uh, after the Food Systems Summit Advances and Challenges organized by the group work group of the food systems in the region, integrated by the ECLAC, the FAO, the IFAD, the UNDP, the, uh, the World Food Program, and the Environmental Organization. Before I begin the conference, I would like to remind our panelists on the Zoom platform that you maintain your mics in silence or muted and your um, camera is connected. We would like to inform you that this conference is being transmitted in real time through our social networks, through YouTube and Twitter. We would like to invite you to comment on this conference uh, through Twitter with the hashtag Perspectives 2023. The governments of the countries in Latin America and the Caribbean carried out the preparation for the Food Systems Summit, various national and independent dialogues. In addition to governments took on challenges and commitments to advance in the transformation of food systems to achieve more sustainability, resilience, effectiveness, and inclusiveness. The chamber, uh, the summit took um, part on the 23rd of September in 2021. Today, a little more than uh, this, a year from this uh, important event, we meet to analyze the different contexts that are currently impacting the um, effectiveness and advancement of this important summit which are mechanisms that involve governance that is important to continue with this important agenda. This event gathers different players, government agencies of United Nations counterparts in the scholar, scientific, private, indigenous peoples areas to carry out this important discussion. We'd like to continue with a, this event with an opening remark by the directors of agencies of this working group. The, we invite Jeanette Sanchez for the director of uh, resources. Catarina, of buenos días. ECLAC. Buenos días. Uh, thank Excellent. you very much uh, to all of you, excellencies and distinguished author authorities of Latin America and the Caribbean, which are participating my friends, the uh, uh, VP of Uruguay, Uruguay, Madame Ana, Giron, and the Minister Mustafa. of Agriculture, Sufika Mustafa, 
uh, colleagues, um, directors of este, agencies with book, whom we are working de la FAO, throughout this period, I would like on behalf of FAO to recognize the significance of this high-level event organized by our work group, interagency work group for Latin America and the Caribbean, where we are participating in a fraternal and active uh, creating a work um, agenda with our friends from FAO, IFAD, uh, UNDP, and other agencies in June of 2021 in the uh, FAO Rome organization event. And another in New York, we had a regional participation and we took an important um, or decision with this uh, food systems, and we found ourselves again in this event, an extraordinary opportunity to progress with the objectives set forth. And this is why it's so important. The summit in 2021 was not relevant only due to the participation and commitment of all the involved players, but rather because it recognized the support and the important for importance of agriculture in, su in the development of fundamental involvement in its economic and environmental significance. We cannot think of this, this as a, only a productive aspect. We need to understand it in its context and relevance with a comprehensive anal analysis and its impact on the economy, the environment, and our social role. Uh, the summit set forth an important message um, this could not be treated exclusively from a sectorial viewpoint. And we have to put it at the center of our discussions. And our we still have major challenges. Latin America and the Caribbean, as you know, has 56 million people that are uh, hungry. And more than, than half have health, um, food insecurity. And this is linked to levels of inequality, linked to the pandemic. Um, the disacceleration of the economy, the high inflation rates, and of course, the war in Eastern Europe. There's more inequality now. We have to take on the climate change and the degradation of natural resources, its impact on agriculture and the vulnerability that is exposed to the productive system, given the um, national disasters that are affecting millions of people, particularly the rural areas. We no are solo, facing actions that uh, ha, have no precedent, not only from the uh, standpoint of the government, but rather all the uh, players, the private industry, the academy, and uh, the uh, social uh, civil society. This has an important role to create a resilience to be able to set a stand in front of these challenges. We must not forget the, cha the challenges of the countries to implement the roadmaps at the national level that it was taken on at the summit. We need to develop permanent dialogue, a dialogue no to share experiences, perspectives that allow us to analyze and learn good practices of countries and different sectors for the transformation of uh, agri, agri systems and ensure food security for people on behalf of FAO, but I also represent the collaboration of other agencies as we have worked through this period of the funds and the United Nations program. I would like to underline our disposition and our commitment to face all the challenges that this uh, uh, summit provided a través de la cooperación y trabajo conjunto lograremos temas alimentarios the joint work will we be able to have more efficient más resilientes y sostenibles basados en una mejor, una mejor nutrición un mejor medio ambiente realmente para mejorar better environment and finally to improve the quality of life of everyone without leaving anyone behind. Thank you very Muchas much. Gracias, señor Lubetkin, por sus palabras inspiradoras. Thank you, Mr. Dubetkin, for your inspiring words. For our guests in the social networks, we are correcting, co connecting to all the different uh, people uh, of this event. We will continue uh, with um, de America, Madame de Son, uh, Rosana Polanski, Internacional who de is, is a representative of Vida the Agricultural uh, Development uh, uh, Office, the, uh, of course, the IFAD, 
uh, dear representatives of the uh, the uh, group the work group the authorities that are here today from all the different countries in the region on behalf of IFAD, we are delighted to be a year after the uh, groups uh, of uh, development with this extraordinary group, interagency group, where we have the honor to gather efforts with uh, the UNDP, the, o the uh, OP, the World Health Organization, PAHO, amongst others. You know, hunger and the insecurity, of uh, food insecurity is related to poverty and inequality. And therefore, it affects more severely populations of, that are more vulnerable, as are the small scale farmers, rural indigenous people and Afro descendants. This, of course, uh, has IFAD supporting uh, this group and putting them at the center. And it is more and more challenging. Although the pandemic has social economic uh, effects on the region, we also have an on the table collateral um, effects of the Ukraine war on productivity on products and is affecting the systems of Latin America and the Caribbean. We have to add to that the financial systems at the world level, which makes credit more uh, complex um, in the region. Uh, given uh, this, we have to support programs, which is our most important priority. Uh, a food uh, system uh, involves nutrition and uh, food systems the harvesting, the packaging, the processing, the transportation, commercialization, and food access. And it's all the interactions amongst people and the effects of these uh, in the people's nutrition system. There are also inputs, the infrastructure, and the services that favor all of these different axes and the role of cultural practices uh, to achieve the results. A sustainable food system has enough nutrition for everyone without affecting the environment and future generations to comply with their own livelihoods and needs. Uh, having all of this and taking all of this into account and almost a year and a half after the summit, it is urgent to continue fostering a transformation of the food systems so that it becomes more sustainable and inclusive. This is a task that is extremely complex, it's ambitious, and it has to have the strong commitment of all public and private players, all those licked into the agro um, food systems. We would like to contribute with several re key recommendations. I hope these will motivate the discussion and the seminar that begins today. First, to invest in the small uh, scale production that, uh, um, that supports them in storage, commercialization, distribution. Other, uh, secondly, to provide innovations as nature, agroecology, that will increase the production of small scale farmers. Develop, uh, thirdly, uh, agricultural systems that are real and linked to um, a just return for these uh, small-scale farmers. Reconcentrate the aspects where uh, it, really, uh, it requires a, reg a the change of regulation so that the rural population of developing countries can be benefited by these new commercial uh, or trade agreements. The food has to be excessive, excessive and access would be provided to farmers. And it is not fair that people that are producing food will be faced with hunger. It is very important to understand the involvement, more involvement of women in productive chain and economic um, involvement. Women with uh, um, youth in the rural area are key to promoting and fostering inclusive, sustainable, and resilient involvements. We must not leave them behind in the asp aspect of eradicating hunger, uh, amongst other aspects. On this summit, there has been roadmaps that have been set forth participatively, uh, both regional, country level, uh, so that the production, trade, and consumption of food 
are fair and sustainable and that they must be available for the population, particularly for those that are found in a more vulnerable context. Now, what we need is strategic investment policies to be firm and uh, attain firmness and commitment and the interagency involvement for Latin America and the Caribbean play a fundamental role in the region. Uh, for all of that, in IFAD, we are promoting uh, and uh, putting uh, rural uh, populations at the center, working with the government, with the legislative areas, academia, international agencies, and uh, rural families that are producers of foods and to improve their nutritional um, livelihood and uh, well being. I wish you an excellent conference. We hope that many ideas are triggered and that we create the impacts that are expected. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madame Polaski, um, for your wise words. Now we're going to have a short a video, the subdirector of the organization. Uh, of Washington. Estimada Janet Sánchez, directora de la División de Recursos Naturales de la Comisión Económica para América Latina y el Caribe, CEPAL. Mario Lubetkin, subdirector general y representante regional de la Organización de las Naciones Unidas para la Alimentación y la Agricultura para América Latina y el Caribe, FAO. Rosanna Polastri, directora regional de la División de América Latina y el Caribe, del Fondo Internacional de Desarrollo Agrícola de las Naciones Unidas, FIDA, Juan Bello, Director Regional para América Latina y el Caribe, del Programa de las Naciones Unidas para el Medio Ambiente, PENUMA, Lola Castro, Directora Regional para América Latina y el Caribe del Programa Mundial de Alimentos de las Naciones Unidas, PMA. La Organización Panamericana de la Salud, de la Salud Organización Mundial de la Salud, la Salud saluda y saluda agradece la participación de todas y todos en este webinar, a un año de la cumbre de los sistemas alimentarios. Considering the current context, let me tell you, please, to underline and thank especially the participation within, in this webinar of the regional directors and staff of agencies of United Nations, resident coordinators, and others, uh, counterparts of gov governments, academies, bilateral organizations, and civil society. The uh, summit on food systems was called upon by the Director General of United Nations to sensitize the world que los sistemas and set form that transforms y reducir systems la... to eradicate hunger and reduce the incidence of diseases linked to food. And in addition, to cure the planet. Se requiere más cumbre para Notwithstanding this, we need more than a summit to turn to trigger these transformations. And this is the main reason why the PAHO and the World Health Organization participates in this meeting that is celebrated today to follow up on the decisions set forth in this summit and principally to continue the with the path of the mentioned objectives effectively. The uh, COVID-19 has uh, provided a setback in aspects of nutrition uh, in the world. And we need coordinated multi-sectoral involvement. Therefore, the design of food systems that produce food and healthy food in a sustainable manner is urgent. To change food systems in a coherent manner and link it with health, it is fundamental to reduce the elimination of any type of malnutrition, which is set forth in zero hunger in the sustainable development goals. Activities to promote healthy food and sustainable food must protect the healthy food consumption and public health 
particularly for situations and uh, uh, societies that are more vulnerable. PAHO has supported a member states to promote uh, effective ultra paths y otros to productos. provide, uh, to analyze other fabrication uh, practices, manufacturing and processing negativamente a la salud. that are unhealthy, that affect negatively to all the players in the Junto food system, salud. from the field to the Apoyamos la adopción de With our uh, sister agencies, we support uh, agro-food policies that will provide y de nuestro support that are coherent with human health. Ultra the effective regulation of ultra-processed foods and unhealthy production and uh, availability uh, requires labeling in the face of all the products, a tax on this type of products, uh, taking it away from schools will improve those that will stop consuming these products, will also contribute to a more sustainable food system. On the other hand, it is fundamental that policies that conform these systems will foster more moments for Esenciales production a una for those that produce essential products for healthy environments like fruits and vegetables, more spaces for monoproduction like agroecology, more space en particular for producers para las mujeres, at a small scale, indígenas, for women that are producers, for indigenous doctores, people, for family producers, for shepherds, for fishermen and women, and at, um, uh, promoting S, this for more from the field to the cities. We necesaria. are strengthening the training necessary to face all the different faces of malnutrition with better practices and incidences to help populations access to healthy food and a good public health system. The food systems, the um, World Health Organization has been essential in the document, in the narrative of health, it describes the main manners in which food systems influ are in influence and set forth practices to take action. To face this, we need to gather our efforts and we should go beyond our individual uh, uh, agendas. It is very important that PAHO and WHO are involved in these um, food system summit in the collaboration, in collaboration with all the agencies, provided technical support in the pioneer um, organizations and the roadmaps and their countries. These are all aligned with the implementation of the roadmap of PAHO, which establishes a system focused on nutrition, de la salud, on the de uh, work processes of PAHO with a complementary and harmonized manner con our priorities to continue working with our partners to guarantee that health and life are the basis of the transformation of food systems in the region. We, do, we wish you an extraordinary webinar. Thank you very much. For your kind words. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Juan Bello, Regional Director for Latin America and the Caribbean from the UNEP. I would like to remind you that you have five minutes. Thank you very much Good morning everyone who is with us in today's session and very especially the representatives of our sisters agencies of the technical group especially the clag pajo 
UNEP and all of the others. I joined to this to promote the processes that come from the Food Systems Summit, which also helps us to expand the necessary dialogue to facilitate transformations that are needed in food systems for our health and our planet's health. I would like to highlight first that food systems are directly related with this triple planetary crisis of loss of diversity, contamination, and climate change. The depth of this relationship, as well as the impacts of these crises, are still increasing in Latin America and the Caribbean. These interdependencies are highly recognized and incorporated explicitly in the environmental agreements between the different parties. For instance, in the last uh, agreement of biological agreement, where we agreed upon a new biodiversity framework, we adopted several goals for 2030 specifically related to food systems, such as reducing to half the food waste, reducing significantly overconsumption and generation of waste from the food sector, reducing to half the excess of nutrients and the risk that comes from pesticides and agrochemicals, and the progressive aggression, increasing of subsidies to the agriculture sector that affect biodiversity in at least $500 million per year. These goals are a clear example of the direction of the environment in efforts related to agro-food systems, especially the importance of our joint work coordinated between the different dimensions at the moment of promoting and supporting systemic transformations that are needed to reach the objectives related to food, sustainable and resilient systems. From UNEP, we promote the work with a minimum impact on the planet. This is why UNEP focuses its efforts to promote food systems that will be sustainable, contributing to integrity of biodiversities and ecosystems that contribute to the climate stability that do not contaminate and will be the baseline of healthy diets for all people all around the world. UNEP takes space to make a call to the integration of the multiple levels and focuses, including the good health focus, as well as interdependencies between resilient regenerative agriculture, waste of food and nutrition, just to mention some regarding regenerative agriculture. We recognize the agricultural lands sustainably managed can contribute significantly to those conservation and restoration goals of 30% of terrestrial areas of the 30 by 30 that were agreed very recently. I would like to close my remarks highlighting the importance of working together and in all phases to guarantee that everyone in the planet shall have the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. In that sense, we will continue making an effort to regulate those processes of this working group to have political and regional cooperation instances such as the Forum of Ministers of the Environment in Latin America and the Caribbean. I'd like to take now this opportunity on behalf of UNEP to confirm our complete commitment and the agreements and roadmaps reached by this working group and also wishing you that today's sessions shall be highly productive. Thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, greeting. Those who are following us on YouTube in Spanish can locate the Spanish interpretation link on the icon. Now we will have Lola Castro, Regional Director of the Food Program, TMA. Thank you very much, Katerina. I would like to start thanking all of our distinguished representatives of the different governments, our colleagues from the UN, directors, regional directors, as well as our technical working group that is highly working for this uh, webinar preparation. Also, the audience in the private sector and the media interest on this topic. 
it is actually a very important moment for us in Latin America and the Caribbean, because this is a virtual event of a high level. It is proposed as a space to gather all of us as uh, government stakeholders, the UN and the different counterparties to discuss about the future of food systems within the current system of the crisis and to understand how this has consequences on reaching the goals that we have proposed to change the food system in Latin America and the Caribbean region according to the national realities. In that sense, I don't want to repeat much, but everybody has insisted how food systems have a key role to guarantee access from the population to a nutrition, a regular diet. But we all know that these are fragile systems and they can be affected by external uh, events. And we've seen this in the latest years. We've seen how COVID-19 pandemic made evident that there was a huge inequality in terms of countries and within these own countries. And we need to protect and strengthen these food systems together. Governments in our region have taken great initiatives. Nevertheless, we can still see these inequalities uh, that seen and deepen later on by the effects by the Ukraine war, global inflation, the slow financial recovery after the pandemic, as well as other events that have happened within the region. All of these have presented and they continue to present new challenges to protect the activities related to production processing, transportation, and food consumption, which is the whole food system. Just to give you two global points, we have seen, unfortunately, that from 2021, we have hunger of 220 million people, and due to the different crises, it has increased 150 million people from the disruption of COVID-19, and we they are under food unsafety. And the most recent data shows us that there's a number of people that cannot allow to have a, a healthy diet in the world, and they reach 3,100 people, which continues increasing. All of these due to this poly crisis or this cascade of crisis we've seen. In Latin America and the Caribbean region, we have great opportunities to fight this crisis. Nevertheless, we continue seeing these shocks that are feeding back, making difficult the solution. But we keep on working together to actually ensure both the international prices related to grains that has not been reflected in a drop in prices at the national level and other activities shall continue so we can ensure that our population will have good and proper food situation. Just to finish, I would like to say that to support this double effort of facing the current crisis and achieving the transformation of the food systems, according to the national context, we need to balance the immediate needs of the population. Sometimes this come up related to hurricanes or others, and at the same time to contribute to the long-term objectives of the 2030 agenda that we all have it, we need to achieve zero hunger as we have discussed before. In this sense, the World Program, the World Food Program wants to work together with all governments, the different UN agencies, the civil society, the marginalized, to ensure that we have food system that will provide adequate food, safe and nutritious for everyone. At the same time, ensuring people to be educated or trying to achieve the resources needed to be to defend themselves from the different crises and being more resilient to prevent this huge migration that we see in our continent which is related to food unsafe food this should be one of the many spaces that we will join our efforts to overcome the current challenges and we shall work together to achieve a world without hunger on behalf of the World Food Program, I desire for all of you a great seminar. Thank you very much, Mrs. Castro. Next, we would like to welcome Mrs. Janet Sanchez, Director of Natural Resources of the Economic Division for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC. Welcome. You have five minutes. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here as well as my colleagues of the UN system. 
governmental authorities that are with us today, representatives of the private sector, the media. We know that currently, after two years of the pandemic and with the war that my colleagues have mentioned, it's in great danger, the, the food systems which are experiencing high vulnerability. The war affected the food systems of the region through different channels. One side, the increase of international prices of food, affecting especially the poorest population. Also in the region depends on the consumption of fertilizers, which are important for the agro food productions. This has sustainably increasing since the war broke. And although they have been dropping, the prices are still very high. These increases on prices are tallied to the increase to the price of fuels, and they have negatively affected the exchanges within the region. After this external restriction, we have other internal restrictions within the countries as a consequence of the measures taken by after the pandemic in these years. In this context, the preliminary balance of the Latin American and the Caribbean economies that ICLAC presented, it, it forecasts that this year will be uh, the deceleration of the the growth for our countries and also we still have this debt that is still high it, reducing the decrease of freedom for the use of policies and especially the fiscal policies there are also climate factors in argentina we have for instance la nina phenomenon which according to the reports will be affecting the harvesting of wheat in 44 percent compared to last year droughts are affecting the crops and production of soy and corn which was estimated a reduction for argentina and brazil the livestock production as well that it's the user of many of these supplies it is also affected not only in argentina also uruguay and after these climate and economic restrictions affecting the region, we also add the social situation that we will see later on, according to the latest report of the social landscape for 2022 in ICLAG, it is estimated that out of 200 million people, almost one third of the region's population is under poverty situation. 82 million, more than two digits, is under extreme poverty. In the region, over food and the safety, as FAO has shown, it also increased more than the rest of the world. Therefore, this collects and create, creates a challenging context where it is urgent to sustain the well-being, especially of the most vulnerable population. It is important that we shall work with agreement with the private sector and create alliances between the countries to reduce this vulnerability of food systems on the region and to move towards achieving the objectives that governments have set in the summit. We, we hope that this open space in ICLAC to have a dialogue, to exchange information, to see new opportunities of joining efforts, analysis, actions, We'll have a fruitful environment of development, of moving forward and generating commitments. Thank you very much, and I wish you a good morning and afternoon.
Thank you very much, Mrs. Sanchez. Thank you for your welcoming words of all directors of our agencies. I'd like to remind you that those who are watching us have the link for the Spanish uh, streaming is on the YouTube channel and you can comment about this conference through Twitter with the hashtag Perspectivas2023. Next, we will see a brief presentation of the Regional Working Group for Food Systems in charge of Rafael, official of officer of the Food World Program. The floor is yours. Okay, muchas gracias, Catalina. Eh, Thank you, Catalina. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the panelists that are joining us today and everyone who are following us through social media. In my presentation, I will talk about the working group, interagency working group for food systems for the region. I do this on behalf of my colleagues that are part of this group, who I would like to thank and send a special greeting to all of them. We'll cover three points on this presentation. I will start with the balance of the food system summit, especially for our region. Then we will talk about how and what is the function of this interagency working group on food systems and what will be the next steps in the group related to support to the countries for the implementation of their roadmaps. As we know, in September 2021, we conducted the Food Systems Summit, seeking to provide a voice to key players who work on processing, transportation, and food consumption to strengthening the systems and protect them out of different crises. Throughout the world, we gather hundreds of dialogues with governments and independent stakeholders with a wide participation of the different sectors where we have identified the greatest needs and priorities to ensure that everyone will have access to nutritious food. And this chain of stakeholders and actions will be supported and protected. As a result, the governments and the agencies or bodies from the UN, NGOs, indigenous peoples, civil society, the private sector, the academia and the parliaments committed to implement roadmaps with actual actions to reach these goals for the 2030 year. Up to today, 117 countries have developed roadmaps adjusted to their own context and realities of their, their own food systems. And there are 27 coalitions which are working groups per theme topic related to a certain priority or need identified during the summit. Similarly, in order to provide technical support to the countries in the implementations of the roadmap, the, the Secretary General of the UN appoints the agencies based in Rome this mandate to support these roadmaps. And the coordinated half for food systems is created. Latin America and the Caribbean region had a strong participation in the process uh, in the summit. 20 countries were in the pre-summit lectures related, uh, conducted in Rome. And finally, in the summit conducted in New York, 23 countries participated from the region with high level representatives of the government. Currently, 17 countries of the region have a roadmap. They have been published and they are in the process of implementation and 16 countries join 12 different coalitions. Given the high participation of the countries of the region in the summit and the strong commitment evidence to move forward into robust and resilient food systems, we decided to join the activities of support at a regional level with the creation of this working group between the different agencies. The working group or task force is aligned and supplements the work of coordinating the hub, inspiring the Rome Hub, this group is uh, comprised by six UN organizations, as you can see on the screen. And the group comes with different objectives. One, to provide direct support to the countries through the implementations of their different roadmaps. Two, organizing dialogue spaces, exchanging experiences, and strengthening the capabilities at a regional level where the different countries 
may share these experiences, lessons learned that have gone through the process. This is uh, an example what you see on the screen of those objectives. Number three, promoting coordination and continuing the link between the regions, the coalition and the Rome hub, facilitating the incidents of the countries and contributing to the sustainable development goals. That's the main essential of the working group is to support the countries and all stakeholders involved in the food systems in the region, reaching the goals proposed in the summit, contributing and guaranteeing the human right to food and moving forward to zero hunger and other sustainable goals for 2030. During the process of the creation of the group, there were some consultations to the coordinators to identify priority topics and the interest of, providing, of receiving technical support from the group. In a general way, they uh, identified as priority within the countries, food issues, public policies, and climate change. Also some other topics related to family farming, trade between the region. From now on today, 14 countries uh, have confirmed their interest to, speak, to receive the support, and today we are supporting Uruguay, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Guyana, Republic, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Honduras, El Salvador, Belize, Guatemala, and Mexico. Very soon, we will have Costa Rica and Chile who expressed their most recent interest. In this way, the working group comprised by this organization operates at two levels, a decision-making level led by the regional director, which gathers every three months to discuss the main topics of this topic related to the food systems in the region and the commitments of the summit. And a technical support level comprised by technical groups of all the six agencies out of which they gather every two weeks and the exchange of the development and implementation of working groups, actions and activities related to the group. It is worth to highlight that due to the joint work character and between the different agencies, the group has rotational leadership created under the leadership of FAO and currently is led by the WFP. On the more practical aspects of this work group, we will be taking on four major tasks to generate a regional plan based on the update of the roadmap, identifying priorities of countries identified in their own roadmaps, continue with the capacity building of everyone through more areas like these of dialogues with exchange of ideas, good practices, and other generating useful information such as publications, technical uh, research, coordination with the uh, uh, academic centers, civil society, and other researchers where this uh, will replicate successful uh, stories and implementations follow up the compliance of the work plan at the regional level and commitments attained to advance with the uh, advances that we have made uh, during February and March there will be update uh, workshops in each one of the countries that we are supporting to identify if the needs and priorities have changed and if we can align them to this new reality. During April and May, the regional event will carry out a preparation of call, called stock taking moments from the uh, summit of 2021. This regional event will be called host um, event stock taking moment um, which will be done in july between the 24th and the 28th which will provide a two-year post summit uh, event and also the hub you can contact us either one of us thank you very much uh, thank you rafael very much for this uh, work group uh, information we'll have the second block of this event where we will carry out a uh, uh, event current uh, facing the uh, crisis will we be able to change our dialogue madame sanchez who is para america latina y el caribe sepa señora sanchez Tiene usted 20 minutos y cuando queden cinco será avisada. 
tiene la palabra. Muchísimas Para gracias. gracias. Bueno, es, es, es en realidad un honor eh, para nosotros desde la CEPAL poder presentar alguno de los uh, elementos e información de contexto en, en, eh, en esta misión de eh, eh, fortalecer los sistemas alimentarios que debemos considerar, sobre todo en los momentos so actuales. Uh, under the current uh, scenario. Could you just advance, please? Uh, we will talk about some of the messages that were key that we need to consider. Fundamental, este, the a fundamental message, unfortunately, is that the dando la current context alimentos. is making uh, food Colegas security que, 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 much que, more que, complex. Many of our colleagues that set forth their um, opening remarks at this event have already been mentioned. It is fundamental, uh, the, uh, fundamentally, the increase in food prices has affected negatively the vulnerable population of our region and our region as a, a whole. As we know, Latin America and the Caribbean uh, depends on the import of fertilizers and these fertilizers are less and less accessible to our producers and to our countries find themselves amongst the highest consumers giving their performance. The, uh, or yields uh, given uh, fiscal economic um, decisions impact the access uh, to finance these imports, which are so highly required both for food and fertilization. Next, please. Por otra parte, en América Latina y el On the other hand, in Latin America, America and the Caribbean, the este no se comporta de price, uh, food price index does not behave in the same manner for all of consumers. Uh, firstly, it increases more than the general average than the uh, uh, consumer price index, and it also unproportionately affects the uh, lesser income uh, homes, which are the ones that consume uh, relatively um, their a basket of uh, food, and the uh, regional insecurity also increases in stronger than in other uh, areas of the world. There's also an increase in poverty, as I stated in my previous intervention. Uh, and this is what concerns uh, in 2020, uh, most in 2022, and also, and in particular, the rural sector. Next, please. Uh, now we will go and look at some uh, data based on um, are uh, set forth, we realize that the current cycle of uh, food increase, uh, price increase, is the highest that we have ever seen in this millennium. As we can see and observing in the uh, food, uh, World Food Index, uh, although it begins as of March of this year, we see that the level is still uh, Momento oh, far above the highest growth that were implemented or seen in 2007, 2010, 2011, which were high price cycles too. You can see that the prices are very high, oh, sorry, of the food. Therefore, evidently, it will permeate, uh, permeate the inflationary um, indexes of all the countries in our region. Next, please. Lo dicho, el aumento, Very well. El precio Based on what I've said, what I've stated, the increase of uh, food prices went above uh, and beyond the uh, general inflation. You can see on the table on the right, the interannual prices in the dark red, you can see the uh, food index uh, for food and um, uh, drinks, uh, which has increased in an accelerated manner um, and has an effect on the inflation. And although 
it has reduced it is reducing in a more slow path in these months on the right hand side we can observe how that price increased um, hits the most uh, unfavorable and poor uh, uh, group uh, particularly in uh, goods and services and in that which relates to food and therefore the impact uh, for this quintal uh, of the lower income affects them in a stronger manner therefore we have to pay more attention to those sectors next please la inseguridad alimentaria conforme nos ha dado la, 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 la información FAO empeoró the, la región the nuevamente tasas superiores uh, al promedio mundial. Estamos viendo cómo recibiendo las consecuencias más desproporcionadamente en el resto del mundo. Y esto nos this concerns us enormously. This is because we had already uh, started at a concerning position based on the social indicators that were uh, observed as deteriorating in all these shocks that we have lived uh, for two years now uh, hit us more uh, strongly and particularly in the region and this is something that is going to provoke uh, larger gaps and more concern for matters of hunger izquierdo. and food insecurity. Oh. As we can see on the left, according to FAO, in 2021, the food insecurity uh, uh, of a severe and moderate kind affected in 2021, 40% of the population Las estimaciones and que, taking into eh, account Nezepal, que the lanzó recientemente, estimates observamos que that la was launched recently in the study is that the extreme poverty increases in 2022, Entonces, no mostly in the rural sector. Eh, si bien so, unfortunately, va uh, 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 la although there is in a este, eh, deceleration of inflation, no que haya in social terms, we do not see uh, del, de robust reversion of this deterioration previously observed. Por otra parte, la región es altamente dependiente. On the other hand, the region is highly dependent on the imports of fertilizers as we, have, as we have heard before that are less accessible. And the uh, key aspects is that the prices for fertilizers affect the yield of the following um, agricultural season. It's not only on the short term, but rather uh, it will uh, continue Temporal. dragging uh, for a future agricultural seasons. Estos, the region is highly dependent on these fertilizers and they consume more fertilizers uh, when uh, compared to their uh, yield on a world average, which is another um, aspect of alertness and that which uh, refers to the awareness and the use of those fertilizers. Bueno, the next image uh, illustrates what we have just stated. The world increase in uh, fertilizer prices are present. In red, you can observe Uria, uh, and you can see how all of these fertilizers of different uh, um, aspects uh, increase, but one that is used extensively in the region is urea, and it continues uh, at very high growth, although it has been reduced in the last months. We cannot uh, settle with this um, relative normality, quote unquote, in the last millennia. We continue at very high levels. Next, please. Y vemos, eh, demostramos and we also el gráfico, observe and demonstrate with this uh, graph on the left and how the region, but particularly South America, has a high dependency 
on imports of a lo que uh, es el USA. Igual uh, fertilizers, 86%, and also el, el, Central America, a little less in the case of the Caribbean. Uh, and the indicator of accessibility that FAO has caída. Um, ya venía uh, illustrates a serious drop. We had already seen the drop, no. but we el, can see that in 2021 and in verás. 2022, it, it has not been able to uh, recover the accessibility to fertilizers, this drop is significant. The countries in the region are find themselves, those that are the highest uh, world consumption for fertilizers uh, uh, related to yield, um, these are the ones that consume the most. You can see the consumption of fertilizers towards the right, those that consume more, and in the yield in the axis, of uh, uh, the y-axis uh, and the x-axis, you can see the um, yield. And you can see in the axis of highest consumers of fertilizers and lower yield, you can find many countries of our region. In the case of cereals, you can see countries in the Caribbean, particularly Guatemala, Honduras are concerning. Uh, we also see in the case of soybean, we can see Belize, Suriname, Ecuador, or Mexico with very low uh, yield, and in um, the high in the high use of uh, fertilizers. So there's a great deal to be done here, and uh, that which relates to fertilization and the alternative use of different types of fertilizers. Next, please. Ahora volvemos a compartir la, la pantalla. Now we will share Segunda. the screen again. One second, please. Por mientras puedes seguir sin las láminas, por favor. Meanwhile, uh, sí. can you continue without your overheads? Hemos, uh, yes. Visto, uh, la, la... We have also seen the evolution of fertilizers we are going to set forth uh, some of the restrictions, uh, economic, fiscal, and commercial restrictions that are affecting the availability uh, to finance those imports of foods, above all for countries that are high importers. We know we have a very heterogeneous um, region and not only export foods, but also import food, but, uh, Caribbean, Central America, and Mexico are importers of food. And we know that for 2023, we expect to have a deacceleration at a general level in that which relates to growth rates in the uh, GDP and the fiscal deficits in many of the countries in the region are, although they are close to pre-pandemic levels, they have not reached those levels. And we have public debt, which is extremely high. As was stated, we, it reduces the space uh, for freedom to generate policy. So we have to make an effort to think uh, with a more cost-effective criteria, these interventions and policies. On the other hand, the terms of exchange for countries in the regions were uh, reduced in 2022. Now we are observing on this graph the growth of 2023 and, and the region has a very modest growth of 1.3 percent that in per capita terms it uh, illustrates a stagnation uh, with a very weak uh, growth for Latin America, uh, South America, which is very, in a very difficult location in that year as projections set forth by ECLAC. Uh, particularly Chile and uh, Haiti will be mostly affected with uh, uh, low uh, growth rates. Madam Sanchez, you have five minutes. The fiscal deficits continue uh, to drop. We will try to go a little faster with the images. 
uh, these are, um, as I said previously, are not at the level of pre-pandemia pandemic. Uh, the public debt uh, still uh, sustains very high levels, particularly in the Caribbean. This is just to illustrate that the economic context is complex. We uh, find ourselves with a deterioration of negative in, 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 uh, projected variation in terms of exchange in countries. Uh, also, in, in, in any case, the food uh, systems have behaved more resiliently, if you will, and they have been they're being proved by all of these restrictions, facing all these restrictions, a fiscal, uh, social, economic uh, standpoint. Uh, next. So, with this, uh, this con uh, the challenging context, we need to sustain the well-being of the more poor sectors. We have already insisted on this previously in a, a, a brief that we launched with FAO and the World Food Programme. On the short term, we need to strengthen the protection uh, of social networks, the transfers that are focalized and that need to be coupled with the inflationary a standpoint with the uh, food programs, link them with social programs, uh, with uh, promotion and uh, fostering uh, of these uh, world uh, food programs that have very important programs. We need to deepen and scale them, not restrict international trade of uh, fertilizers, improve the transparency of markets sharing a uh, key information on production uh, stocks um, and uh, support uh, the um, stocks prices implement agreements uh, and inter exchange experiences with producers with the commercialization chain um, strengthen the support policies in agro industry particularly family agriculture of farming, which are essential in the production of food uh, at the tables of our homes, of internal consumption, increase the efficiency of fertilizers. We can discuss extensively here. I hope that there will be uh, more input on that uh, base. Uh, promote the use of bio fertilizers. Um, we need industrial policies to reduce the extreme dependency on um, importing uh, fertilizer is such an adverse scenario. We need uh, to diversify our suppliers, promote local food consumption, making the regional integration projects dynamic. We need to formulate and implement responses for the regions with the purchases of fertilizers, for example, or for the proposal of alternative strategies, um, uh, inter-regional uh, productive networks to reduce the excessive dependency on the supply of uh, products, uh, particularly in fertilizers uh, from the world. And the final um, uh, overhead, I uh, wanted to say that we know that there's a real um, risk of the exclusion of family agriculture in, the, in access to fertilizers, which raises the actual price and uh, breaks the uh, supply chain. And evidently, uh, given the levels of prices and the cost of production that have increased, um, we have to be particularly um, and open to provide a very well directed um, and focalized um, support. As we've stated before, it's already concerning the uh aspect of fertilizers that were not accessible enough this should go hand in hand with technical and practical uh, different ideas uh, that promote and foster the use of biofertilizers uh, 
um, which involved new technology here, there was an advantage and opportunity, I would say, in the middle of the critical situation of the pandemic, that the digitalization, uh, digital, uh, digitization was expanded. And we, uh, we want to ensure that gaps do not uh, broaden. And here, FAO and ECLAC is working jointly and very closely and, um, uh, for uh, uh, the uh, technical assistance. We need to provide uh, the region with technologies and, te and technical information uh, involving the substitution of synthetic uh, imported fertilizers the incentives and policies to work with governments at the local level and also um, with the producers, alliances, public, private, in order to achieve uh, those agroecological solutions and transition that provides responses to nature that and is also focused on um, facing this uh, grave situation that we face. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much Madame Sanchez, for this analysis and recommendations to face the uh, current affairs. We will have a dialogue, regional dialogue with seven guests to ch talk about the challenges on the transformation of our food systems. Before we go into the presentation of each of them, I would like to say that Currently, we have the participation of more than 700 people that have joined us to the streaming live and also directly on social networks of the UN agencies. We would like to remind you that you can keep on commenting about this event, hashtag Perspectivas2023. Now I'll give the floor. Mrs. Maria Takachi, leader for the regional program of FAO, who will be the moderator of this space. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone who are present here attending online and also here through the Zoom session. Our guest panelists, I'd like to give you the warmest welcome to this dialogue space, which is the second part of this webinar quite rich in terms of the contributions. We've been through the six bodies leading this and supporting the country's process. We would like to go now to our own countries, to our, our own partners in the countries, sharing their visions, their progress, and the challenges and opportunities that they can see after a year of the summit and what is coming ahead throughout this process led by the Secretary General to provide follow-up on the food systems for this year. As Catalina mentioned, we have seven guests. Each of them have, we will have contributions of them all related to achieve the transformation of the food systems and this comes from the government, the civil societies, the academia, the indigenous peoples, the private sector, to flow into the different visions, which brings a lot of uh, richness itself after this summit. We will go very briefly, introducing the panelists and having two rounds of questions to make this uh, as dynamic as possible, starting with the domestic national and governmental, we have two guests, Beatriz Aguimón, Vice President of Uruguay, National Governor of Food Systems. She was the national representative of Montevideo and a great uh, Uruguayan politician representing the region. Mr. Sulfikar Mustafa, Minister of Agriculture of Guyana, also National Food System Convener member of the parliament in the 2003 and 2006 regional president of the sixth region he has a degree in this management of course he has worked on the agriculture civil society we have luis carlos costa executive director of fina pop popular financing of food 
Healthy Food in Brazil he has more than 14 years of experience in the production, cooperation and environment sector of landless rural workers movement. He's an agronomist with a master's degree in agroecosystems and public management. Representing the Academy, Mrs. Sofia Bosa, ambassador of Chile to the World Trade Organization and academic of uh, Universidad de Chile. She is a professor, associate professor and director of the Department of Rural Management and Innovation in Universidad de Chile. She's an economist. She has a master's degree in this field. Elizabeth Terresine, PhD in public health, professor of nutrition in collective health at the University of Brasilia, Brazil, member of the Observatory of Food Security and Nutrition Policies of the same university. She's part of the National Coordination of the Brazilian Alliance for Adequate and Healthy Food, also member of the expert group of the UN Committee, represented the private sector, Pablo Barbieri, Deputy General Manager of Cooperative Obrera, Second largest consumer cooperative in Latin America with more than 2.5 million member consumers. He's a psychologist, he uh, has a major in cooperativism, leadership, and executive management. Finally, representing the indigenous peoples, Mirna Cunningham, doctor. She works as a public health profession alongside the Miskitu indigenous population at the Atlantic Coast of Nicaragua. She's a vice president of the board of directors of the Fund for the Development of Indigenous Peoples of Latin America and the Caribbean, FILAC. We have a powerful panel, of many experts. To not losing our time, I would like to open the dialogue with the first question that we will ask everyone. So I ask for your support to answer this in five minutes, please. What are the challenges that you see in the countries for the transformation of uh, the food systems? We can see it here, of course, from the regional point of view, from the agencies, from the bodies, as a supplies. It's important to know how this is reflected in each country. How do you see and address these challenges? I would like to start with the order of my introduction of the panelists. Beatriz Arjimón, please, you have the floor. First of all, thank you for this possibility of sharing this prestigious panel this possibility at right at the beginning of the year. First of all, I would like to apologize. I will try to summarize my position. And as you know, I'm president of the General Assembly. By virtue of the drought that we are facing, I have a meeting that was not considered and exactly because of exchanging different measures to address this, and I have to be in that meeting. I didn't want to miss this opportunity to participate because of two things. First, I think it's highly important the role, especially by FAO, but ECLAG, all who have uh, called us today have, are leading in these events that are so important because not only makes us to look at ourselves in this uh, essential transformation, but also take quick future challenges, especially Secondly, because we are in this wonderful continent that needs to optimize everything that involves these challenges, being clear on what it means our territory in a world where Latin American potential is obviously related to the production of food. The challenges at least here in Uruguay, there was a before and after without a doubt in terms of the world event that made us all to talk about food systems organized by FAO. In that sense, the way that we took what was happening, Uruguay decided 
after an exchange or round table in the challenges of the food safety will be discussed in the national parliament. Why? Because this is a topic that should be part of the state policy here in the legislative power where we are all the political parties here. It's important that from here, we will talk about the need of that transformation and we will have agreement principles that will be a sustainable policy. Otherwise, we start with a new administration and then each administration, each government within their own right and within their own law can lead this initiative. So for us, it's important to have a baseline for the transformation, which is essential on food systems, which we have been working and we shall be all agree, all the political parties. If you tell me, the main challenge that we took was that to be all the political parties agreeing that we all need to consider this in our agendas. We establish and we have this from the previous administration, we strengthening in this one, a specific committee addressing the food system transformation. How? It is a committee that not only is comprised by parliamentary members, but uh, it works with the civil society and all who are related to the production chain. And in another aspect, and, uh, and this is why I said that it was important for me to participate and set our position as, as a country, we have led some initiatives some some practices opening up this topic, trying to be everywhere where this is important, incorporating stakeholders of all levels to these challenges that our food systems have from the transformation point of view. In this sense, the education system has a key role. We have approached the educational system as a parliament, together with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fishing Authorities and the Ministry of the Environment in order to even with the publication that the national parliament conducted in our own facilities, a book where we explain the citizens what it means, the systems transformation and how we are all involved in this process because all of us should participate in this process. If you allow me, I would like to finish by saying that there will not be a transformation of our food systems if everything that we work on is not enough to show about what we're talking about and if it's not inclusive, because evidently, and for me it is important to comment this, the more awareness we create leading this transformation, the quicker we will obtain the results that we wish to obtain out of this process. And I would like to finish by saying that there is no quick transformation if we do not involve women of our continent through this transformation. The role of women is fundamental for the transformation. For me, this is part of this essential transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Minister. We will take some notes for the end. I'll go now to Mr. Sol. Sofikar Mustafa, the minister, to answer this question as well. What are the challenges that you see in your country for the transformation of the agri-food systems? You have five minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, let me say I'm very happy to be on this panel. And when you look at that question, that is a very um, a question that demands a lot of answers because right now we are seeing crises around the world. And in Guyana here, we are making a, a, a lot of efforts to ensure that we transform the food system and we contribute to the reduction of our food import bill. So it's very, very important from a perspective, from our perspective, that Guyana has established a foundation 
in several of the existing strategies on policies that will aid the transformation of our national food system as a more actionable solution are being undertaken with urgency in Guyana. Guyana has been investing in strengthening food security in the region by funding several projects and programs that aim to expand and increase food production nationally. Our government has been focusing on increasing production of imported commodities, as well as increasing the resilience of the agriculture sector. We have embarked on increasing um, a number of areas that we have found to have a heavy food import bill. And as you know, that the region is on the, um, in the process of looking to reduce the food import bill by 25% in 2025. And Guyana is leading that charge so that various countries in CARICOM are looking to the leadership, towards the leadership of Guyana in reducing and transforming the food, the, the food system in our country and in the region. In respect of crop production, there are a number of new crops that we have embarked on. For example, we want to develop the livestock sector. But how we can develop the livestock sector? We have to look at the linkages. And that linkages to transform the food system in that area, we are now going into new crops to produce all the needs for the corn and soya so that we can produce all the livestock feed in our country. So the linkage will be there so that we can be a net, um, what you call it, producer of these feed and also at the same time be a net exporter to the region. So at the same time, when we transform the food system in the region, we will also reduce the food import bill of the region. The journey to transformation we have encountered, however, the journey to transformation we have encountered a number of challenges that has to be addressed if we, if we are to make significant strides in the agri-food system agenda. And countries like Guyana that are very vulnerable to climate change, that are vulnerable to shocks in the world, we have seen what took place during the pandemic. We are seeing now what is happening um, during the conflict in the Ukraine and Russia. And there are a number of problems that we have encountered. And some of those are increasing price of agriculture inputs, for example, Fertilizers and other planting materials have skyrocketed due to the global crisis. In turn, the cost of production and the cost of living for Guyanese will we'll see con um, it um, rise continuously. And government has to implement measures and, um, and bail out a lot of subsidies to ensure that we cushion the rising costs. Inadequate drainage infrastructures to combat flood flooding effect from increased um, heavy rainfall and rising sea level. We have seen more money being allocated in this area to uh, reduce flooding. Um, what we have also do, we are working now to have crop insurance being implemented into this part of the world so that we can transform the food system and reduce the, 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 the effect of climate change. The inability of small and medium-sized companies to access finance readily. This poses a major constraint for um, small um, economies and um, small size companies. Non-existent system to appropriately manage food waste and losses. Inadequate agriculture data system. The government of Guyana is currently pursuing the establishment of an agriculture information system. Lack of disaster preparedness and recovery framework, which leave Guyana vulnerable to disaster and its after effect. These are some of the constraints that, the constraints that we are faced with. But as I, as I mentioned earlier, that the government has implemented a number of systems together with sister CARICOM countries to ensure that we transform the food system. We produce new crops that we used to import in a large quantity. We go into mass production, for example. We have increased the production in aquaculture which is now an industry in the Caribbean to transform the entire food chain and food system in, in the region. So we are making a lot of strife, strife, and I'm hoping that in the new year, we can work with organizations like the FAO to continue to receive help from those organizations, especially technical help, so that we can continue the trajectory in transforming the food system in Guyana 
and the Caribbean. But it's not a work only for our country or our region. It's a work for the entire global population. It's in a work that all of us have, have to come together because we have seen what ha has happened during the pandemic. Many countries with large sums of money were unable to procure food for their population because there is a scarcity of food. We have seen a reduction in production. And these are the problems that we are encountering. And countries like Guyana and the Caribbean that are very prone, we are living in the, in the second most disaster prone region in the world. We will have to find mechanism with financing to continue to transform the food system. But rest assured, Madam Chair, we are moving there and I am very, very optimistic that we can make and deliver to the population of our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, for your very important points to bring Caribbean context, the, the, the issue of disasters and the import dependencies. Uh, those are very uh, common problems from different countries. Um, paso la palabra ahora a Luis Carlos Costa para I give the floor to Luis Carlos Costa para to talk about uh, Luis Carlos Costa. You have five minutes. Boa tarde. É, primeiramente, agradecer pelo convite, é, parabenizar First of all, e thank you for this invitation. I'd like to greet everyone in such an important event. And I have five minutes to answer such a complex question, but I'm trying to bring the life experiences about the social fight in the farming sector in the rural area. Therefore, to begin, we need to see the context on what are the relationships with the social entities, the government. We do believe that it's not admissible that there's hunger, especially if we look at Latin America, to accept 33 million people with hunger in Brazil. We know this affects all the rest of the countries. It is unacceptable. We need to observe this and create a long-term policy of a structure to fight hunger. Why is this happening? Because of the use of land and how the territories are structured in the countries and on the hands of who are these territories located. These are defined by the development of the area, communities, development of the food, the food that will be cropped in those lands. We need to go through the concentration of land, not only land and its distribution, but the protection of family farming, protecting the indigenous peoples. When we talk about the Amazonian region, we see the indigenous populations that live in the region, they are threatened. We go through this in a very intense manner in the latest years. Those are the greatest challenges to take the food production to those spaces to generate income, protection of the environment. And for us, it's clear that this will be done through family farming and cooperative farming. When we talk about distribution of land. Our traditional agriculture has external supplies, also policies that I think is not acceptable that a world on the other side of the world will affect the food of our population of the working class where we need to be a suffering these international actions. We are countries that in the case of Brazil, we have an agribusiness in Brazil that we feel proud of being a producer. This interdependence of commodities, of dollar, and the variation of dollar affects the production of food that reaches the table of the workers. Last year, we have the price of beans, which is a basic food, increased a lot. It was missing in the market. It was much more interesting to produce or crop soy for livestock in Europe. There was no public policy in terms of food. If, uh, food was a priority and to purchase this through family farming. 
we could have random production of food. It will not be in the hands of others. We have a great challenge. We have an agricultural policy that can price everything related to production, the direction of trade, the need of technical assistance, the need of guaranteeing the purchases through the government purchases. We need a large development project for rural development, focusing on family farming for diverse food production that will reach the tables of the workers. And we shall not go through this situation of generalized hunger due to the crisis that we can see that are happening. Passo immediately la palabra a Sofia, Sra. Sofia Bossa, de Chile, por favor. Para contestar la pregunta de los desafíos. Muchas so, gracias. So we can start with the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for the organizers for this invitation. And thank you very much for uh, providing me with some time in the framework of uh, the Food System Summit. Chile was very active with very initiatives in 2020 and 2021 to participate in the previous activities. Uh, I would like to underline there that under the state-led, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs created a um, a group uh, made up of six different ministries with the offices in Chile of FAO organized 16 national dialogues, one of which was central and 15 were carried out at the regional level. Uh, we also had independent dialogues. Therefore, all these efforts, all these dialogues and meetings that took place uh, where we found not only uh, with the public system, academies, social, civil society, private industry, were very important to, un to have an idea to perceive which, how, uh, which uh, were the most important challenges that we were facing to be able to transform a food system for a more sustainable, resilient, uh, con in a more resilient context. There is a very illustrative document that was created as a summary of these dialogues, and we mentioned which were the topics that were that appeared more uh, consistently and um, the topics that were considered during these events. And just to mention some of the most important ones, access to nutritious food in urban centers, pandemic, the right for food and how to implement it, social determinants and economic determinants for food uh, systems, environment, environment and the sustainable, the pandemic of obesity, uh, food security, the participation of youth in um, food uh, production, the consumption, the support and association in Chile, the resilience uh, facing vulnerabilities and the various crises, commotions, tensions, and how to generate in, in general terms a more sustainable systems, not only at the national, but also at the community and neighborhood levels. Um, all these topics that were identified and were extensively discussed during these dialogues, uh, both organized from the public uh, standpoint and independent dialogues, um, reached uh, the recommendation of the creation of seven axes, and I can tell you later a little bit with more detail, but fundamentally we identified education of uh, food and nutrition, uh, gender-based cultural and territorial areas to promote resilience through intersectorial work. Uh, the strengthening of production and uh, trade at the local level to guarantee the sustainable uh, food access, community focus, research, development and innovation, and the care for the environment and agricultural development. So in, uh, as a summary and to be brief, what we observe is that as a result of these dialogues, in the case of Chile, it underlined the significance of guaranteeing that the food systems would promote nutrition and health. I think this has a great deal to do with the high figures 
of obesity and overweight, which are very present in Chile, where the participants in the dialogues were under underlined this. We saw the concern because the food systems are sustainable and resilient. And it was also mentioned that these uh, last topics are extremely important in the current toxins of poly crisis or uh, global systems uh, we find ourselves in, or the social context we find ourselves in. And also to, um, I would like to mention also that just recently FAO Chile published a very interesting document where we analyze the challenges and sets forth recommendations for the uh, food systems uh, based on the climate crisis, which synthesizes very well the work that was done during these dialogues and discussions that uh, we discussed during polycrisis and world systems. Thank you very much, Sophia, for bringing, uh, setting forth uh, information about the discussions that were carried out in Chile. Uh, the issues of overweight and over um, consumption and obesity. Now I would like to introduce now uh, some more questions. Uh, Elisabetta, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to speak in Portuguese. Many of the uh, contributions to these topics and uh, other things that we have discussed on the transformation of food systems uh, bring a, a very important aspect, which is a major crisis or challenge that we face for the transformation of the food systems. Uh, that which relates to sustainability, food, equality, uh, technical or theoretical or concepts that are challenges that are uh, fundamental. These are political challenges because many of our countries in our region have in their agricultural uh, uh, or food system, hegemonics, which are the pillars of the economy. It, consequently, this means that the system has a role and a political incidence which would have at the at its at its center it's not only homogeneous but a, within it there is an aspect in some countries and many of those sectors is a sector that is based on the exploitation of the environment devastation in, amongst the use of chemical inputs derived from uh, petrol oil which exclude workers uh, the rural workers and farmers, which it means that the sector and this form and form of producing food has a political and economic uh, power, which is very resistant to transformations that are urgent and necessary. So this is something that what we wanted is to stamp a uh, concept that was used with the uh, global uh, scientific economic aspects have a predominant food system and a determinant of all the three general objects of poverty, hunger and obesity, which was set forth by our Chilean colleague. If we don't tackle this in an articulated uh, manner, uh, restructuring how we're going to produce and also the supply and consumption of food, we are not going to be able to overcome these problems and we're not going to be able to reach the minimum levels that can guarantee the survival not only of the planet but the human species. We're going to continue functioning, but those that are at risk are us. So it's important to think that many of the consequences, the non sustainability of the food system uh uh for more poor countries and this is where uh, uh we have uh, uh key aspects these are uh social groups that need to have a legitimate uh voice in the decision making process at the national international level it's only then when we are talk about experiences of territories and communities this is when they're going to be experienced and are going to be value-based for uh, food systems. We will have then a virtuous path for the necessary transformation and the time necessary. Um, 
uh, the planet has a challenge of producing enough food for its population. And in a certain way, this challenge has been overcome. Many of the reports, agencies, and so on, demonstrate that we don't have a problem with availability of calories. We have problems with access, not only to calories, but to the variety of nutrients. We have to go from the paradigm of production and quantities to the paradigm of quality and variety. I hope that I am able to have more time to set forth some of the experiences that will take us on that path. Thank you very much. Um, yes, in the next round, we will talk about uh, that aspect. Thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, we will now go to Paolo Marieri from the Cooperatives Meta for we can have your viewpoint. Thank you very much, Maya. Thank you for your invitation. I would like to talk uh, from the perspective where I stand uh, is the private aspect, the private aspect of a social economy of the Cooperative of Consumers from the north of the Patagonia at the center of the Pampa and the closeness uh, to consumers uh, uh, allow us to see uh, the consumers. Those that receive the food system that it is working to reach each, each one of the, its um, inhabitants and consumers. And we believe that two important points, two challenges, I'm not sure if it's the most important, but are fundamental for the presentation or ideas that are set forth concerning with such concerning data, with some dramatic uh, data, but there is capacity as was stated previously to resolve them. There are resources and capacities to overcome them, but they do, are not resolved. And um, we are facing uh, figures that are not satisfactory. Uh, it is complex. And within that, we would like to set forth two uh, thoughts. Uh, one of the challenges is uh, awareness. Uh, there's no change, psychological change, if there's not awareness of the situation and the problems that take place in society at large, if there is no awareness of the situation. We have to work on the awareness sens uh, sensibilities uh, very strongly. When we talk about who we sometimes we talk at leaders, um, if there is an important and profound change, it will come from the population at large and from the consumers themselves, working strongly on the awareness. This economic system works extensively sometimes from the standpoint of marketing and other parts of communication on how to influence people. If we really want to transfer animation, it is fundamental and essential to work on the uh, creation of consumer awareness. Uh, surely it is a system where the uh, receivers are the ones that are most affected. The nutritional aspects, the uh, hunger, uh, and in fact, uh, those that are in the environment are and or hit the consumers mostly because they are um, uh, ne negatively affected uh, because we're all consumers, the education, information, communication, uh, without being uh, innocent or naive in this process. Uh, the previous speaker was talking about hegemonic, concentrated uh, systems, this is more and more evident. Uh, we saw this in the ECLAC uh, report, and it's concerning. This hegemony is concerning. So the second point that I wanted to set forth in addition to the awareness is an important uh, uh, player in the different uh, groups of food systems are the consumers. Uh, if we observe the food system as a chain, a supply chain, a value chain that is involved in the production, trade, transportation, generation, um, cooking, consumption, we can divide this in different ways. Uh, I thought of dividing four in four parts the organizations that are part of this. The organizations or companies of, um, of earning, let's say, uh, 
earning objectives, uh, the most important aspect in the world economy in most countries. In some countries, it continues to be the economy three uh, state-led um, uh, organizations, which is an alternative, which is very good to regulate. It's not very efficient, but it could play a very important uh, regulatory role. Then we have the families, the people that produce them and are self-consumers. And of course, it has another aspect uh, with companies, the social economy. These are private companies and their objective is not um, income-based, it's socially based. So uh, given these, the proposal, in these four divisions, we have to have awareness decision-making with participation of the consumers. If from the state and from the private industries and the companies of social involvement and the families um, work with awareness on the decision-making process to modify the path, these are the ones that pull the chain, that pull the chain from one end and they create a cookie when they push it. If there are changes, the changes will come from the consumer standpoint, from cooperatives. With this protagonistic role, it will be effective if we support it. Uh, thank you very much, Pablo, for bringing this topic of the awareness of consumer awareness. Now, I uh, would like to invite uh, Mirta on her response. Five minutes, please. Mirna, uh, thank you very much, Maya, and thank you uh, to the organizers of this activity to invite Indigenous peoples to be present. Uh, I say hello from Cosno Miskito in Nicaragua and from the Directive Cons um, uh, group uh, from IFAD. Uh, the celebration of the uh, Food uh system summit where we were present as indigenous people with the firm conviction of uh supporting the process with our traditional knowledge through the food uh, chain uh, one of the main challenges of the process is that we identified that although the food systems in indigenous um, peoples are sustained in traditional values that are maintained in the solidarity uh, linked with Mother Earth. It has allowed us to develop construction of consensus, um, gender equality, and uh, participation in collective territories. And they were not recognized or valued in the past by different sectors. Therefore, our uh, main objective was that these values are necessary to develop a post-pandemic, more solid, uh, more solidarity-based and equality-based um, development. Our peoples can help to develop resilience vis-a-vis uh, -vis the loss of biodiversity, the impact of climate change, and the environmental degradation. I live in a region that was affected during this process by two horrible hurricanes that destroyed an enormous amount of our communities. Notwithstanding this, these food systems uh, traditions that we have post-hurricane and post-pandemic allowed us to continue feeding ourselves and our people. Uh, these systems contribute to increase the agroecological systems that have uh, regenerate, regenerative uh, agricultural practices that recognize traditional uh, processes and systems. The another enormous challenge that we set forth was the participation, a full participation of indigenous people at, at all levels. And therefore it was fundamental for us that in the creation of the Center for Coordination, uh, you, it was established that there must be a participation of the indigenous peoples. This was led by the permanent fora uh, uh, in United Nations 
we have been able to uh, progress in the creation and involvement and participation. We have also observed as a challenge the uh, uncontrolled uh, expansion of agroindustry, the um, agroindustrial farms and the monocultures um, are degradating soils uh, in our region. And they are effectively um, bringing a loss in diversity in the communities and generating new diseases. For example, uh, diabetes type two. These productive practices are eroding uh, diverse and uh, rich cultures. And another challenge that we see is the capacity to continue controlling and self-managing our lands because it is within those lands with those practices we we maintain and transmit the uh, knowledge and practices so we set forth this challenge and we underline the need to maintain an open di dialogue inter scientists amongst equals on the chain to sh to share knowledge and wisdom and uh, we believe that we're, if we're able to face these challenges, we would be in better condition to attain what we have set forth for ourselves as a roadmap during the summit. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mirna. Very good points uh, uh, for the traditional communities to achieve uh, food systems that are inclusive and sustainable. Um, uh, very good first round on the first question. We will go to the second round, as was mentioned by Elisabetta. Uh, we can direct it towards solutions and responses that you already have developed. So the question is what type of initiatives or good practices do you consider relevant and strategic for the transformations of agro of food for better efficiency, inclusiveness, resilience, and sustainability. These are the main challenges um, uh, and the reason why we're here. So the Vice Minister Beatriz needs to leave. She left her regards. And I will go now to uh, uh, Mr. Mustafa, Minister, please. The proposal is there. Given time constraints, we can um, shorten our responses to four minutes if it's possible. And then we will uh, continue on the chat if we have, um, please. Uh, Her uh, Your Excellency, you have five minutes for your response. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I think it's very important in this time that we develop initiative to and best practices to make the food system more efficient. And in Guyana, we have developed and formulated a number of initiatives to transform the food system. In order to transform the food system, despite the many challenges that I would have outlined earlier, and that we may encounter, there are initiative or best practices that can be employed to make them more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. First, the issue of inadequate finances must be addressed as it is a key driver for food system transformation. So that's very important. And what we have done in CARICOM last year, uh, we had a number, as a matter of fact, two major agro investment forum where we had a number of investors around the world who attended that forum and coming out of that forum we have seen a number of investment now being generated in member state especially places like Guyana so financing can be incorporated with the locals where we can uh, match financing together with asset in terms of land ownership and in countries like ours and in our region, there are many small farmers who would have owned land, but they don't have finance to start to invest in those lands. So we are now matching that with investment 
coming out of this forum. Further to support national effort to achieve a more balanced and efficient food system and deliver progress in all of the 17 SDGs, investments are required for the development of production, transportation and logistics, technology and infrastructure. On a wider scale, to promote strategic transformation and contribute to sustainability goals, such as social well-being, ecosystem health, and food and nutrition security, we can engage in actions that foster diverse, sustainable, and environmentally sound innovation that proliferate across the food chain, operating, opening opportunities for change. And in this, Guyana is leading the light with the low carbon development strategy. Um, we have had a revise of that, a revision of that, and that is showing where we are generating for using our, our climate and our forests to generate funds to invest in the agriculture sector. Only yesterday, we, would had, we had in Guyana Parliament and uh, the national budget. And when you look at the investment in the agriculture sector, almost $38 billion have been set aside to invest in agriculture in our country. Those are the transformation we are talking about. Also, the engagement of farmers, consumers, and other agri-food actors is also crucial. R raising farmers' awareness of their responsibilities and technical possibilities for transforming food system will also be key. Technical and financial support for investment needs to be accelerated if we are to achieve changes in the agri-food system. And there where government comes in to ensure that we facilitate these investments and we assure farmers and try to create the necessary infrastructure to develop and enhance the agriculture system so that we can put in these practices and strategies to transform the food system. Thank you very much. Luis Carlos Costa. Your next question, please. You have four minutes. I will let you know when you have four minutes on the chat. Here, it goes together with the focus of the minister, the focus we see and experience that for two years already, we provide financing. We have as a strategy to link the customers, mm -hmm. the consumers, the civil society as a whole within this project of strengthening the family farming and healthy food production diversified. We start creating tools. When I say we, we are the cooperative organizations. We organize between the different entities to create tools and find resources, collecting resources, These are essential steps for sustainability. The cooperation, the agroecological production, respecting the environment, focusing on activities that are led by the youth and by women. These are projects when we promote and we develop this type of project, six the strengthening of processes. Always keeping in mind the sustainability of the production. We talked about women. We understand that for the development of organic agriculture, it's essential that the leadership of women should be considered. And to go beyond of the total lack of resources and incentives, it involves the other countries as well. With that, we strengthen this understanding that with little investment, we can create a lot of agroecological production, generating territorial movements that will have as a consequence results of self-financing, expanding the participation of families, developing cooperative entities. We understand that we are building this process we cannot do this by ourselves. We need public policies, especially when we think about the long term, to create 
trading channels, we need to have the public investment. We believe that our contribution goes in that direction to show the public and the entities, the federal entities, that it is possible to invest, which is necessary to invest in this area, to have public policies, to create investments, because we have a huge return for the production, development of people, development of the territories, as well in terms of prices, food security for the investors as well. And also there's an improvement of the cities and the rural sector. People do not only participate in purchasing products, but also financing the production of that food. So as a summary, this is the experience that we would like to bring to discussion. Now we go to Sofia Bossa for the perspective from the Academia. You have four minutes as well. Thank you regarding instruments and strategies. In the case of Chile, within the Food System Summit and after that, Chile creates our own roadmap as well as many other countries. This roadmap is coordinated with the governmental program, the National Food Security Program, and the FAO Chilean government uh, agreement. This roadmap is presented at the middle of last year in an event where we had FAO as one of the organizers. One of the things to highlight out of this roadmap that sets our strategy are the main focuses. First, we will promote sustainable food systems, emphasizing on pop the population's health, social protection, and nature. Thinking on social determinant focus on health, I think that's important to highlight. As well as other topics, the roadmap has a tendency to go into productive systems that shall be sustainable, protecting natural resources and biodiversity. Fostering territorial development that shall be inclusive, improving the life quality in rural surroundings, which in our country and many others are sort of delayed when compared to the urban sectors. Recognizing and incorporating women, the indigenous peoples, and also the youth, which are segments that have been uh, vulnerized in the agricultural production, in the food production. Of course, it is important to implement this roadmap in a coherent manner, together with the communities and international agreements. I'd like to highlight some of the actions, fundamental actions, are the most uh, novel actions developed in 2022, the initiative of expanding uh, food microbanks going from 10, only two regions of our country, to 70 in all the regions of the country, launching the Arriba por una Vida Sana Fund to finance community orchards projects and physical activity sectors, also in urban sectors, not only in the rural areas. The participation of the National Committee for Production and Reduction of Food Waste and Losses, and I believe that FAO and other international bodies are organizing this webinar know that it is essential to be able to reduce waste and losses. Also, the participation of different international coalitions, which we're, we're participating. Also, the participation and follow-up of the summit's results in terms of food systems, the national constitution of a food sovereignty and security committee in, in the last report for last year, they're creating a national plan for food security. I would like to highlight those actions for 2022 and facing 2023, certain actions that would like to be done and that are already scheduled within the international agreement that Chile has with other countries during the first semester. Chile will host the second 
World Parliamentary Summit against hunger and malnutrition, which is a very important milestone. Also, it will be the host of the Interministerial Conference of Neutral Carbon and Food Systems that will be gathering ministers of agriculture and the environment of more than 30 countries. And finally, I would like to highlight in the second semester, Chile is promoting the second summit of ministers on behalf of food, uh, um, education or school or the food, which will gather school system uh, food that Chile is incorporating very lately. And it is an important way, as you know, to distribute and supply healthy food to some vulnerable segments of the population, fundamentally children and the youth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sofia, for sharing this context of Chile's roadmap and such an important event. Now give the floor to four minutes. Thank you, Maya, Elisabetta. There are certain lessons that we still need to understand. And these are the consequences of the pandemic, COVID. These are not positive things, but we can talk about positive things in this moment, but these are transformational point of view related to food systems. An investigation conducted by FAO at the middle of uh, 2020, when the pandemic had not reached its peak. Another thing is the municipalities and the cities that have structural policies and local policies were able to respond to the challenges decreasing trade, economic attraction, reducing the labor market. So it's important to think about those experiences related to municipalities that sometimes are reduced to federal decision making. So I think it's an important pathway for transformation, investing on local policies as well, also related to the important aspect of transformation, the food systems, which are related to food supply, as well as uh, distribution is concentrated in large uh, holdings, also the supply. So we need to invest on local supply and territorial as well. Initiatives were during the pandemic increased and they came up from the civil society in informal groups of people related to food provisions, community um, kitchens and others. From the more specific point of view in Brazil, specifically, and I hope not only in the population, but also we expect that during this year, we will start with a new public policy cycle related to food security, nutrition, and the food systems. We would like to resume our national food security nutritional system, which will articulate public policies in specific governmental sectors in order to have actions, specific actions, but also articulated that will go into production, the land, supplies, health, and consumption. We have two large pillars that today in Brazil are resumed in the interministerial chamber. This will go to the other states as well. The National Council of uh, Food Security and Additional Security that will also be responsible to the full control and social participation that will be deployed within different areas. The Conseil as well, our National Council, where monitors our situation and the articulation of the policies with the objective of determining goals to prevent hunger, but also to conduct conferences where we will see priorities for the food national security system fighting against hunger. 
sustainability and access to nutritious food produced in an ecological manner. Thank you very much. Now I'll give the floor to our dear Pablo. So you can give us uh, your response after the second question. I will try to do that in four minutes. The participation of the consumers, of the smaller producers, the workers. I was commenting in the previous question, but cooperative and organizations of social economy have a lot to say, and we have great value to present from now on. There are some experiences that I can take to my country in terms of production. The Argentinian cooperative are key for trading grains in Argentina, and it's comprised, it was born out of thousands of producers of different regions in the country. For the In the processing, there were some experiences to tell you some good and the bad things. A, a very interesting experience in Argentina of a cooperative related to dairy. Unfortunately, today it's been reduced, uh, the pr participation of them. This was used by a large international company. Of course, the producers that were supplying that uh, cooperative now supply this international company. They have important differences, of course, on the recognition of their production. When we look on towards the positive, very close to a city, a small town called La Regueira, less than 5,000 inhabitants, where within their co-op, they started the dairy very recently. And the general director in a Congress in Paraguay said the, the mill comes very close from Red Data. It goes to Cordoba or Santa Fe, 600 or 700 kilometers from there. It returns in chill trucks and then the inhabitants purchase it next to the dairy producer with an increase in the cost of this huge with an impact on the environment and with small value for the producer for the producer so this what we have worked on the dairy farm and the dairy industry provides other perspective just to give you different examples for the transportation different experiences and logistics for trading in the distribution of food within the co-ops, the labor co-op, which uh, the one that I belong, it is an example on how to lead these more than two million and a half of members. Just a program that we lead for sol solidarity program that was born two years and a half, where we recover 400,000 kilograms of units of products that are not ready for being tried, but they are ready to be consumed. We have volunteers that do not receive an income. They prepare this food and they take it to different institutions, schools, where they are where they attend vulnerable people, we reduce the waste and we manage also without hunger. Also trading with Sadowski Co-op in the vast country that depends on the largest co-op in the world that was born in a city that has 21,000 inhabitants, the Mondragon Co-op where Donkey is, where they have 200 stores, they have more than 80,000 workers. There are many experiences that show that from the co-op model, there's a lot to contribute with this problem that we're discussing. To finalize, I would like to tell you that from the labor co-op today, we have we are located in 71 locations and more than 62% of them have less than 25,000 inhabitants. Locations where no international companies were reached when we started there to regulate prices. There's a greater access to products today there is a dignified work for those who work at the supermarkets. And mainly we have the food supply on the hands of the consumers. This concept of management without an income will be the one that leads and take control of the organization, listening to the consumers. Regarding the economic side, there's no profitability for the capital, for the equity if between the price of sales minus the cost of the product minus the expenses of the operation, there's a difference which will be the profits, it's returned here. How in an, with an equality in terms of use, 
If I have a consumption of 100 and I have three of return, I have three pesos. If I consume 1,000, I have three pesos, not in terms of the equity, but in terms of the use, because it is a surplus and challenges that we take. We have a lot to do. We're discussing this and we're discussing also within our organization to keep on working every day to improve the healthy food, to have more different products, to promote them, observe and work to reduce the impact on the environment and something that we have been discussing here and we still have a lot to work is the promoter and educators of the consumers for the transformation of the food system of serving from the dish from the table of each one of us thank you very much pablo for such a specific example and practical example which are essential for the food systems now give the floor to mirna for your second question, you have four minutes. Thank you very much, Maya. As I was saying, participation is essential. In this sense, the Coalition on Food Systems of Indigenous Peoples must be a space where the Indigenous Peoples will actually keep on participating. Nevertheless, after listening to you and how this initiative at a regional level created a space where we need to ensure participation by indigenous peoples so from there we will feedback the focus of the indigenous peoples within the roadmap within the technical assistance that you will provide to the roadmap of the different countries in terms of some recommendations, very specific ones. The experiences we've seen from the local level goes from the care and exchange of native seeds, initiatives for added value to food product on forests of the maritime coastal system, insects, relationship between traditional medicine to promote the immunological system in food systems. Leadership by women has been essential and therefore the role of the, of the young people as receivers of the traditional knowledge, but also as promoters of innovation. What we have been told by women is that along the different consultations is that we need to keep on promoting the territorial focus with a holistic vision within all the initiatives that will be related to the strengthening of productions. The production of food systems or so the generation of this food system should be related to the ancestral practices and their lifestyles. The Amazonian women, what they state is that they can produce food and how to collect food based on what they already know how to do. Also women have stated the importance of articulating the, uh, the, the indigenous cuisine with what the previous panelists were saying, this vision of consumers, where we will take ingredients and recipes that are created in the jungle, in the mountain, and the forest, and will be taken to the cities. And finally, everything related to dialogues on food systems and trading of indigenous products, supporting community companies, economic indigenous initiatives, and this in the creation of uh, infrastructure and technology after the harvesting. All the work with the indigenous peoples, we have constantly stated that we cannot improve the food system if we do not legal security and security of the ownership of our territories. I see that we need to work at different levels and this can only be achieved with dialogue and participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, colleagues, for this session of dialogue where you have also been able to interact with us. 
it's difficult to have a summary, but we have challenges, um, natural disasters, uh, import of products, uh, input, the use that was generated, uh, that were the food security, the awareness of consumers, the significance of knowing the va ancestral indigenous values uh, to respect these practices, indigenous practices. And there would be a second round that you raise the significance of investment, investment inclusive and territories, the role of the private industry, the role of the local policies, the development of supplies in that which relates to the dependency and policies such as uh, food banks, community, um, uh, taking advantage of, of food, participative uh, 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 seeds, the value of the knowledge of women. There were many topics that were essential and fundamental that were raised uh, with all of us and uh, maintenance and tenants, uh, uh, legal security. These are important topics that were raised by you. I think we had almost, almost 2000 people connected still. So this shows the relevance of, of an interest of the community at large of the region on this dialogue. I will pass on uh, the word to the moderator so you can continue the follow. -up. Thank you very much to all the panelists for providing us um, ministers, vice ministers, uh, colleagues that have been involved in, in this dialogue. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maya. And thank you uh, to all our panelists for their messages and for their willingness to participate with us at this event. Now to conclude, I would like to open the word to Lola Castro, who will give us some brief conclusions. Thank you, Madame Castro. Thank you. And a really extraordinary panel. Thank you uh, to all our speakers. It has been exceptional, the indications, the conclusions that have uh, uh, been set forth. Thank you very much. We have an evidence here that in our region, there are major challenges, uh, difficulties to strengthen our food systems and promote a healthy food consumption. But also we see the enormous efforts and the different practices that the civil society, the private industry and others are implementing in order to find, uh, to put into po to poverty and hunger and all the world in Latin America, and particularly until 2030 comes around and we hope we can attain it. It is for, if it's for me to conclude this excellent uh, presentation, we have heard extraordinary set forth. We've seen the participation of all the direct, the regional directors of uh, five in uh, United Nations offices that we have, um, um, uh, we are working to achieve uh, the food um, uh, systems and that they continue, continue uh, working better. We have heard how we work uh, as a group. Uh, and that was presented by Rafael and also by the excellent presentation by Eklat, by Jeanette, who told us the, about the perspectives, the data, the information. And of course, at this moment, what I would, what I would like to say is that we are following what we concluded in this summit on uh, in 2021. And in that summit, we uh, raised our, our voices and talked about all the uh, major players that participated in the food systems at the local level. And we have had an example of this in this webinar. We have had the entire uh, Latin American, the government, the civil society, indigenous people, the private industry. And we clearly understand with United Nations that we need to work jointly in order to find the path uh, uh, to um, to see how we consume and attain the uh, food that we consume. I think that I would like to underline and thank Maya for her great coordination task in this dialogue uh, that was organized by her. There were certain points that we have raised. I would like to um, mention that how we see in Guyana, in Chile, there are excellent practices that have been 
uh, set forth by the representative of the government, which are uh, really progressing on the roadmap and the recognition it ha these countries have on the needs and uh, capacities of transforming, of transforming the food systems in the same manner. We heard something very interesting in this panel, which are all the activities that are um, um, designed towards uh, uh, policies in uh, the protection of people in the territories of people that are producing food and to progress in the objectives of the summit, which were set forth by Mr. Costa and Madame Elisabetta Resina. I would also like to comment that it was important on what Pablo Barbieri stated. He said that we need to link and co co uh, protect uh, co-ops and local um, uh, participants. Uh, and there has been extra extraordinary successful transformation paths in that field. And to continue, we have heard the excellent presentation by Madame Mirna uh, that underlined that the communities must be inclusive, that they have to have participated and that the indigenous people must be heard. And they, how they both um, all of them can participate in the analysis and the implementation of roadmaps of countries and how we as United Nations and the rest of the players must also uh, participate, protect and rescue the ancestral knowledge that should be incorporated. We have found, therefore, a wealth of information in this webinar. Uh, we have heard all the different initiatives, good practices of countries and people and sectors and uh, from that standpoint, we are on the right path so that all these experiences become a valuable material that will set a spearhead of what we will be doing in Latin America and the Caribbean, all the good practices that we have learned, but not only for our countries, our nations that are present, but also for other countries and regions. And that without a doubt that it will provide us with solid progress and that when we will carry out the balance of the summit, which will be in July of 2023, we will continue consulting. And I would like to um, underline that to ECLAC, um, all the organizations participating here are extremely committed to uh, support the government, civil society, and all the allies to achieve that coherence of policies of uh, social directives and that all the people have the right to access um, safe um, uh, food products that are healthy and we must continue to invest in food uh, sustainable uh, systems that are an investment to the future and to the human capital that comes after us i would like to thank each and every one of you for your participation and to uh, raise uh, the extraordinary work that has been um, set forth with this roadmap for the food systems, which are extraordinarily good, not only because they're moving with this roadmap and they're helping us to face this multidimensional crisis, crisis that we have been talking about and that the poly crisis that has been mentioned and that has it is uh we are undergoing at the world level we need to have an early transforming um uh, um movement and that leaves no one behind thank you all it has been an extraordinary uh day excellent participation of more than 2000 people we'd like to thank all of you and we will see each other again to continue talking about food systems in latin america and the caribbean with good practices and good and a good future thank you very much thank you very much madame castro and the participations of united nations organizations civil society and we thank the part over 2000 participants that were involved today from the social networks if you want to see this webinar once again you can do so through our website www.fau.org americas we invite you all to participate in more events that our agencies will be involved in organizing thank you very much <laughs>